Hello everyone and welcome to the Ultimate SharePoint Premium Deep Dive Series. If you're listening to this video, well, it's probably the first time you hear about this series. So you know what? Let me take a few minutes and introduce you to what this series is about. If we take a look at the last year, Microsoft really only had one single thing on their mind, and that is Copilot. It's the only thing that Microsoft has been pushing, the only thing Microsoft talked about in every single keynote. And the big topic of 2024 was how do we get more people to adopt Microsoft 365 Copilot, which is all pretty from a marketing and goals point of view. But if we take a look a bit at the real world is that most companies are not yet AI ready. As much as we would love to be, many organizations have started doing their Microsoft 365 Copilot pilot or test deployments with just a few users, and they realize that they have data and governance problems, whether it's sites that are not correctly permissioned, or they have a lot of old content in there that doesn't make sense and it confuses Copilot, many organizations have hit pause or have had to slow down their deployment to get their environment AI ready. And if we take a look, I know not everybody loves the Gardner surveys and all of that, but if we still take a look at the few studies that we have, it says that around 64 respondents in the Gardner survey on Microsoft 365 Copilot deployments reported that information governance and security risks required significant time and resources to deal with. With concerns about data oversharing causing about 40% of delays in the rollouts and if we take a look at the timing, it's three months or more. So it's not like a one or two week delay. It's a significant delay in the project. But where exactly is the problem? We all know that the big advantage of M365 Copilot versus ChatGPT, Gemini, Anthropic, and all the other tools out there is that it's grounded in your content. And the better content you have, the better the AI will be. And where is that content? Is of course in my favorite tool in Microsoft 365, which is SharePoint. SharePoint is the tool that allows you to collaborate and share content, to create beautiful intranets and sites. So really all your intranet content is in there. And of course, well, I mean, at the end of the day, I'll make it easy. All your content is in there. If, even if people uh, use it from the files tab in Teams and people make jokes, it's all about files. At the end of the day, all your content is in SharePoint or one way for business, which is still SharePoint at the end of the day. And Microsoft sees over 2 billion new files added per day in SharePoint, which is huge. So Microsoft introduced this thing called SharePoint Premium. But what is SharePoint Premium? Many people think that SharePoint Premium is a product, but it's not a product. It's a suite of over 30 features divided into three pillars. And those features are not only for IT professionals. They're from, for everyone, from information workers, knowledge managers, and IT professionals. And of course, because it's Microsoft, they never make licensing easy. We have a few licensing methods in there. And to make things even more fun, it changed names quite a few times over the past few years. So now, okay, let's get back to the series. You know what? Because there are so many features to cover, I am not doing this series alone. And I have two amazing MVPs that are joining me today, Drew Madelong and Gokan Oschivchi. How are you both doing today? Great. Not too bad. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for being here and on embarking on this journey with me where hopefully we're going to cover everything. But I mean, let's start with some introductions. Most of you, well, if you're on this channel, most of you already know me. So let's focus on our guest and we'll start with uh, Drew Madelong. Drew, can you introduce yourself? Uh, thanks for having me, Vlad. I'm 
Uh, my name is Drew Madelung. I am a Microsoft 365 consultant, a longtime Microsoft MVP, and a longtime person who's been working on SharePoint since 2007. And uh, this is something that I've been looking forward to to talking about uh, as a former or still IT professional, but longtime SharePoint administrator. I finally feels like it's time that we've gotten some SharePoint administrative features for us. And uh, we are looking to go very deep into each of these features throughout this Awesome. Let's talk to Goka next. Goka, can you please introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. Uh, well, introduce myself. It's not the first time on, on the channel with Vlad, but nevertheless, um, uh, SharePoint MVP from back in time, like almost 11, 12 years with Vlad. We got MVPs at the same time. Uh, Microsoft uh, RD, author of multiple books, World Traveler, and a SharePoint Premium Enthusiast. So, Pretty excited to be here with both of my friends uh, talking about SharePoint Premium and doing all of those amazing videos. Well, let's take a step back. Why did we even decide to kind of do this thing? And it's been, well, about one year exactly today, it was at Ignite uh, 2023 that Microsoft officially gave a name to this SharePoint Premium thing. Uh, Drew, do you want to start on why did we even like, what was the problem? Why did we want to make this series? So what we ran into is, and I've worked with a lot of different customers and talking with different MVPs and, and attending different events of what actually is SharePoint premium? Is it a, we, we've said it's a suite of, it's a suite of product or it's a product, it's a suite, not just a product, yeah. but how does they out, how do these things work together? Why is SharePoint premium even here? And this series, we're going to go through in detail throughout, throughout the series about why this came to be break down the different features that we have so people understand what SharePoint Premium is and why it came to be a suite of products. And a lot, probably some of the history side, historical side of this is Goken, we've all been working in certain parts of this for, for many years, not just the year that it's been out. Awesome. Uh, Goken, I always go to you for content, uh, especially about SharePoint Premium and content processing. How do you find the documentation of SharePoint Premium? Well, the documentation is, is good, but it's not as we wish, as, as Drew has been mentioning. Uh, it is confusing when you have to actually deep dive and learn about the processing experience or any other pillar because we will deep dive into those three pillars. Um, it's changing so fast with all the new announcements, with all the naming changes you said. Um, it, it's, it's just a big problem to us, to the information workers, to people who are going to sell it, use it, consume it, um, to keep track of it. A, a few, a, a, to give you an example, um, syntax was the former word right before SharePoint Premium. If you look to the documentation today, it's still referred as syntax. And I know um, some Microsoft people have promised us to change this like a while ago, but still didn't happen. Um, we can't say that the documentation is good if it still makes reference to a product that disappeared a year ago. That's the reason why we're here, I guess. Yeah, it's, and there's a lot of marketing stuff I find, but not a lot of how do I actually do it. It's like, hey, here's what's the feature, but it doesn't tell me what are all the limitations. How do I actually make the best of it? And I don't know about YouTube, but one of the things I have as a problem is there are so many things that are announced, and I have no idea which one of them is actually there. Because there's things that we have seen at Ignite last year around the Documents Hub for external sharing about contracts management. And one year later, you would think that they're actually there, but they are not. And the combination of the features of what is, in, is, is part of SharePoint Premium is continuously evolving too. It's not coming back to a year ago. It, there's been additions and subtractions to what SharePoint Premium is, which leads to confu a, very, a lot of confusion around what, to your point, Vlad, what is available. If I'm yeah. an IT pro, I turn on my t I pull up my admin center today. What should I be seeing based on license that I have? We now have multiple different channels of licensing. So they can say, if I buy it this way, is that the right way to do it? So there's a lot of con definitely some major confusion around what's available, how to get that, and when that would be available inside of your organization. And, and to conclude, this one is what we have been agreeing with, with, with Drew is that the SharePoint premium is an umbrella term for all the artifacts or the suite we have um, uh, for, 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 for us to use. So SharePoint Premium is like the umbrella 
and all the features are behind that or below that that we could use and consume for for organizations. Um, well, for the next gen content services, let's call it. <laughs> let's call it that. Yeah, like next generation content services feature. So yeah, I, I love calling that the umbrella term, um, and that's I guess the easiest way to explain to those who have never used SharePoint Premium um, to realize that uh, how, how how easy it could be used. Uh, in organization, because you can't go out and buy SharePoint Premium, yes, right? The, you can't go buy yes. that today. You can't go into the admin center and purchase SharePoint. Buy it's not a license, yeah. So our plan is to build over thirty deep dive videos covering everything SharePoint Premium, and there's so many I didn't even really get a chance to put all of them on a single slide. But you know what? Let's break it down. Uh, Gokan, what are some of our goals? For the series. So we want to make sure that everyone on the planet understands, well, at least people using the M3CY ecosystem understanding what, what SharePoint Premium is and how they can get all the benefits of, of the SharePoint Premium features. Especially we are tech people, right? We, 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 we can talk about marketing and, and licensing stories, but the whole idea is to show you how things are working and or not working. So the whole idea is after the video, you would actually have a great understanding of the artifacts in SharePoint Premium. Awesome. And like you said, focus on tech, yes, not marketing. Absolutely. Uh, Drew? And what we want to do with this, when we focus on the technology, we, we, we know we have that audience of the IT pros, right? That's an audience that we feel has been left behind in a lot of the documentation and videos that are out there. So we're going to bring the materials and details around these SharePoint Premium features talk about the tech and how it works. And with that, make sure we, un as part of this feature, as part of this series, understand why this matters to the other side of the business, right? So why is SharePoint advanced management important? Why is some of the kind of processing important, important in your organization to show you some of the benefits of the features, not just the tech as well? Awesome. And of course, do regular updates because as much as we would love to go back in a way. Oh, well, yes and no. From a, As a content creator, I'd love to create content about SharePoint and then be good for three years. That's not the case anymore. So we're going to have to keep it up to date. And because we know that there's such a big audience for it, we are going to create quite a few playlists. So whatever your job role is, there will be a playlist for you. So we will, of course, have the full SharePoint Premium in-depth series with all the videos, but we will also have a video or a playlist for each pillar, which is SharePoint Premium Experiences, SharePoint Premium Processes, and SharePoint Premium Governance. And if you have no idea what those are right now, that's okay. We'll explain those pillars and what they mean in the next video. So don't worry if you have no idea what they are. And also, we'll have a playlist for executives and sales. So if you just want to know enough to talk about it in a meeting or to understand if somebody technical explains it to you, we will have that playlist for you that won't go too deep in the details, but just enough so you know what everybody else is talking about in that meeting. So make sure you follow the Vlad Talks Tech channel on YouTube, turn on notifications so you're notified as soon as a video is posted. You'll have all the links to the playlist in the description below, as well as the socials for Drew and Goken. Uh, make sure you connect with them on LinkedIn, follow them on Twitter, or whatever your social favorite social media is, you'll have all the links down below. So thank you so much for watching this video, and we're looking forward to see you in the series. So see you soon, everybody. 